Okay, all right, all right, okay. Can you hear me? I can hear me, so I guess that's all that matters. <clears throat> Thank you very much for the introduction. Ooh. All right, so my name is, uh, my name is Richard Schneeman, or boom, at Schneems um, on the internet. So uh, a lot of people have problems pronouncing my last name, uh, or, or I should say a lot of people in the US. I go over to Europe and they just like nail it. Um, go Europeans. But it's kind of like schnauzer, or uh, some people might be more familiar with schnapps, um, so schneems. So uh, some people will say that I'm married to Ruby. I've been, been programming Ruby uh, for like six, seven years, something like that. Um, in, like, as it was previously mentioned, I am literally married to Ruby. She's actually here. So this is Lone Star Ruby. Uh, I, yeah, I do, live, I do live in Austin, like 10 minutes up the road. Um, so yeah, fun story, one, one day she just, she just and she, she programs Ruby too, so one day she just comes up to me and she's like, would you still love me if my name was Python? <laughs> I was like, I think we all know the answer to that. Um, so I, I also have a, uh, a dog, as uh, Sandy mentioned, which is like, I think my life is on the right track. Um, his name is Hans Peter Von Wolf. It's kind of a long name because he's kind of a long dog. Uh, you might recognize me from such gems as uh, Sextant, which is now included in Rails 4 by default, which is pretty awesome. Um, you can see your, see your routes directly in your browser. Uh, no waiting, no fuss. Also, um, the wicked gem for building step-by-step -step, uh, step wizards and uh, getting that sorted out. Uh, recently, I've been working on uh, a project called Code Triage, which kind of matches my get up today, but completely coincidentally. Um, and this is a project built for the community members, kind of by the community members. It allows you to get involved with open source projects where you say, man, I really want to get involved more with Rails. Then you can go to codetriage.com, um, find Rails slash Rails, and sign up to receive one GitHub issue per day. So it's kind of an easy, lightweight way to get involved with a project. Maybe you just want to find out more uh, about that project. Maybe you want to solve bugs. Maybe you want to... Um, comment and, uh, and by the way, triage um, it, in Europe. A lot of people are not familiar with that term. Uh, it's basically whenever you come into a hospital, someone will see you before you actually see the doctor to make sure you go to the right place. So um, you, you can, it kind of spreads the load uh, to, to the appropriate place. Uh, so I'm, I'm also an adjunct professor at the University of Texas right here in Austin. Um, and uh, the, like I really did it just so I could say, good news, everyone. <laughs> Um, but also, all of my material is online, schneems.com uh, slash UT Rails. Uh, it is still all Rails 3, but uh, you know, maybe one of these days uh, with some community support. It's all open source, all free, all Creative Commons. Uh, you could actually help me uh, you know, kind of kick, kick it into high gear. OK, uh, I, I also work for Heroku. This is, I feel like, a really long intro, but I promise I'm getting to my slides at some point in time. Um, if you're not familiar with Heroku, we're based out of San Francisco. We optimize for developer happiness. We have a couple of applications running on our platform. Um, and on, at Heroku, I am on the Ruby task force. Um, and the best thing about being on the Ruby task force is that that makes me a Ruby task force member. <laughs> oh, yeah. <clears throat> so also, Matt is one of my coworkers. It's pretty great. I uh, got to go over to Ruby Kagi and see him this year. Um, so right now, I would like to invite you to please close your laptops. I love that sound. <clears throat> unless, OK, this is the caveat, because we're all Rubyists and we love this unless word. Uh, you're commenting on Rails slash Rails issues, then open your laptops back up. That's totally OK. <clears throat> so also, a, a word of warning, there will be spontaneous food advice. Um, if you're from Austin, you might disagree, disagree with my spontaneous food advice. But if you're not from Austin, please uh, eat and enjoy uh, what this fine city has to offer. So the first one, Franklin Barbecue, absolutely amazing. You have to get there an hour before they open, like minimum and stand in line. If you do not, you will not get food. So uh, there you go. Hopefully you might have a little bit of time and see a whole bunch of Rubyists in line on like Sunday morning. would be kind of cool. OK, so uh, we, we've all been there. We've all been kind of like looking at these projects or working with these large pieces of code. And you're, you're talking to like one of your coworkers, and they're like, oh yeah, you know that comment, totally not valid anymore. Or, like, mm, I wrote this six months ago. I have no idea how it works. Uh, you know, maybe like docs. Look at the source. Like that's. I think that's like the Ruby rallying cry, right? 
So um, in, in this talk, I'm going to be focusing on getting into really large uh, code bases, kind of getting information about them and moving around in them, even if you have no idea what's kind of going on. So uh, that, that is, and we're going to be doing that using just pure Ruby. Uh, so we're going to start off. We're going to start off kind of lightweight. Uh, first, we want to be able to get inside of these uh, these libraries. So let's say you're using the Wicked Gem, awesome gem, highly recommend it. The author, you know, really great guy. Uh, so you can run bundle open command, and it will it will pop open that gem in your favorite editor. So uh, if you run bundle open Wicked, if you have your editor set to Sublime, bam, it's open in Sublime. Uh, and of course, in order to do this, you do need to make sure that in like your bash RC or your ZSH RC, um, you're exporting your editor. Uh, you know, like I like MacVim sometimes. Sometimes I like Sublime. Um, so you know, that's really all you need in order to be able to actually get into some of these libraries. You don't have to go into GitHub and like clone them. You you can actually uh, just just open them on your already existing machine. So once once you have it open, we we want to be able to get info out of them. <clears throat> and for the rest of this talk, there are some really cool fancy debuggers. You might have used Pry. There's a, a debugger gem. There's like a debugger 2 gem. There's a debugger like 1.9 something something gem. Um, there's even a keynote randomly quit working on my laptop gem. <laughs> so um, for the rest of this talk, <laughs> as I mentioned, can, I, can everyone see my screen? We're going to be... Uh, we're going to be presenting like this. Huh. The new MacBook Air, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> so OK, we will, we will actually not be using puts. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to restart my computer. Um, OK, or sorry, we will not be using, <laughs> using debuggers. All we're going to be using is puts. Uh, so in, uh, in, the, uh, in military terms, um, People had this big problem where we, we, we now have all these troops and we want to send them out to fight. Um, and in the, in the age of, of guns and um, modern warfare, you, uh, you have to teach your, um, your troops how to, how to aim and fire. And this is a really expensive proposition. So uh, typically, in order to do that, you need lots of uh, ammunition, lots of bullets, and, and lots of troops, and lots of time. Uh, you have to teach them how to kind of line up these sites. And um, and then eventually figure out how to aim and aim and hit the target. So uh, at some point in time, somebody was like, "Man, wouldn't it be way easier if instead of like teaching them how to aim, we just showed them kind of like where the last bullet hit, and then in, in, instead of uh, like lining up sights, they can kind of just move accordingly. So they can kind of kind of." Uh, <clears throat> just make slight, slight adjustments. And I got it up and running. Boom, so there's my, like, all you need is puts joke. Um, so OK, this is, this is a trace around. And for Ruby, we have a trace around. And this is it. <laughs> if you ever use that in a project, it, it is totally OK. You're totally fine. Um, so I, I submit to you. Um, a chance of finding the output. So does anybody see, I have kind of have a little, little logging statement. Anybody? Up. Oh. Man. OK, so yes, you see it at this point in time. Now you really see it. So uh, a little bit of a, a note on um, a note on notation that I'm going to be using for the rest of this presentation. A lot of you are probably familiar with this, but uh, the first thing is going to be all uh, caps. It's going to be either a class or a module name. The last thing is going to be the method. Um, the middle thing is going to have a, a dot in it if it is a, a class or a, a module method. Um, and finally, if we are using a pound, that's going to be basically not a class method or, or a instance method. So um, does anybody in the audience uh, use Ruby 2.0? OK. We're going to try something real quick.
All right, excellent. Uh, what about 193? Okay, this is good. What about 187? Uh, uh, gotcha. Okay, so 187 is totally end of life right now. Um, like, you should probably not be using 187. So I invite you to try uh, Ruby 2.0, now the default on Heroku or even JRuby. It's great. Rubinius, um, all of them are, are pretty awesome. 187, uh, you're kind of opening yourself up to some security vulnerabilities. Maybe. Who knows? <clears throat> That's the really fun part. Okay, so now we're going to be getting around inside. We've, so we've got our, our library open. We know kind of how to get information out. We're going to be using puts. We've got our trace around. Um, let's take a look at some things we can, we can actually do with Ruby. So uh, a, lot of pro a lot of times I'll be looking at a piece of code and I'm like, all right, I can kind of tell what the code's doing, but I have no idea where it's even being used. Uh, and to get that information out of Ruby itself, we can use kernel caller. Uh, so of course, you can get all of this information from, from rubydoc.org. Uh, of course, sometimes like I go on there and I'm like, I have no idea what you guys are talking about. Uh, so Stack Overflow is also really, really useful. But the, the gist of kernel caller is it's going to give you the backtrace. If you've ever raised an exception just to kind of see where something's coming from, you don't have to do that. You can just use kernel caller. <clears throat> you can put it inside of your method uh, just like this. And then whenever it gets called, it will give you an array that includes um, the file, the line number, and also, if you're lucky, you're super lucky, um, it will give you the method name. So you can tell where things are coming from. So use Kernel's, uh, kernel caller. Also, if you can't get to Franklin's, go to Rudy's. <clears throat> By the way, these are non-vegetarian uh, friendly options. <clears throat> As you can tell by the brisket, sausage, turkey, ribs, chicken, pork loin on the bottom of the options. Um, there is no, you will not have to get to Rudy's before it opens. If you do, I'm pretty impressed. Okay, so, uh, uh, all right. We know um, maybe how to find um, out where our, our method is being called from, but uh, sometimes you want to know where's this thing being defined, especially even in Ruby, and like you're using active support, or like you're, at one point in time, I was using a third party gem that had like mon monkey patched like uh, net HTTP that was just like, what is going on here? Like I have no idea. Um, and so it's really important in Ruby to be able to find out like where things are, are actually defined. Um, and this is like my like all-time favorite class inside of Ruby that nobody even knows about. It is the method class. It is also the most confusing named class inside of Ruby. <clears throat> it's like I love using the method class uh, and then calling methods on the method class. Uh, so, but you don't have to know the method class in order to use it. You can just use object.method and that will give you an instance of the method class. So uh, an, an example is we have a string here, hello world. We can call dot method on it, pass in a symbol of upcase, and it will return back an instance of this method class. <clears throat> See? Proof. All right. Uh, once we have this, we can just call the call on it as if it was a block, and it will return back the results of the actual method, um, which is pretty cool. Um, so even, even cooler than that, we were, again, we were looking for where is this thing, thing defined. We can call method source location. So once we have the method, Ruby will actually tell us where it is defined. <clears throat> so for instance, maybe we're inside of a Rails app. We've got app models user. We've got, you know, it's, it's naturally going to be like 10,000 lines long because we're Rails developers. Um, well, hopefully not. But anyway. Uh, so you can, you can call method and then say GitHub URL. You don't know where it's defined. Maybe it's monkey patch somewhere. Um, dot source location and Ruby will just give you that information. So when you run this, it will give you back, again, your file as well as the line number. And now there's no guessing. There's no like, oh, maybe it's in a different part of my file or, or you know, maybe somebody else overwrote it. At one point in time, um, so I used to work for Gowalla and we did have like a 5,000 line long user.rb. And at one point in time, like, you, you do the thing where you write a method that's accidentally the name of another method that somebody else wrote like 300 lines before you. And you know this kind of stuff happens. It's 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 not always in third-party libraries. <clears throat> okay, so let's that's kind of the, kind of the basis and some some kind of things to get started. Let's actually take a look at some some a real-world example. So this is something that I ran into um, actually on code triage. So inside of emails, if you were using a a link to, you have to have a host set. So you 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 can't use a relative path inside of an email because it doesn't know what 
if you're code triage.com or issue triage.herokuapp.com, like it needs to know that. So uh, we, we run into a pretty major problem if um, you include HTTP inside of that host. Technically, that's not a host anymore, but that doesn't, that doesn't matter. Uh, so I mistakenly did this um, because in, in Rails, a lot of times, you can just go ahead and include the um, HTTP colon slash slash and you're fine. But in this scenario, if you set your action mailer to include that, then the result is that you actually get HTTP colon slash slash, HTTP colon slash slash, which is like no good. Um, you start sending out all these emails and then your users are like, hey, your links to your emails don't work. And you're like, I don't know why. I'm not getting any exceptions or nothing in your tests catch this. So it's, it's, it's a really, it was a really big problem for me in terms of like I deployed this bug to production and didn't even realize it for like a day or two until I tried clicking on one of those links. And I was just like, what is going on? So um, the right way to do it is just to simply exclude that HTTP. So that's kind of, that's kind of our, our problem definition. And I was like, all right, well, I know if I did this. I've been doing this for like seven years. I'm sure some other people have done this. Um, and it's kind of a pain to catch. Like maybe there's a way we can either remove the HTTP automatically or maybe we could, you know, um, pull it out or, or, or something. Like let's, instead of like let's make a, 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 we know what the developer wants. Like let's do that, right? So, um, all right, the, the first part of this is actually figuring out where in the code base we even need to make these changes. Like conceptually, we know what we want to be doing. But um, I started out by just saying like, all right, okay, I know I want to be inside of, it's, it's happening inside of link to somewhere. Like these options, we know we're setting these options, we're using these options, but like where is this even happening? So uh, we can get the source location from link to. You just put this in your code, run it, nothing fancy, no, no, um, no debuggers or anything. And then here we go, we've got, we can see that it's inside of action pack. And <clears throat> we can just go ahead and bundle open action pack. Now, this is opening the actual copy that your app is using. So if you, if you bundle open action pack in a project and then like delete everything, then your app isn't going to work. <clears throat> so I recommend not doing that. Also, if you make any changes there and then, and then like deploy, those changes aren't going to be propagated. So you do kind of have to push these upstream. But uh, before we can even get into any of that, you have to figure out where in the code the, the problem is actually happening. Um, so let's take a look a little bit deeper inside of this. Uh, again, this is all code I had never seen before, and this is deep inside of Rails. Um, we, you, you can kind of work backwards, and that's really what we're doing. We can say, all right, we know the problem is we're generating an href some point in time, and it's, it has that double HTTP. So here, um, we, we see that we're setting it, and that is coming from this URL variable. And we're like, all right, cool. You know, I kind of see what's going on, and we're like, okay, perfect. It just calls URL for and passes in some options inside of Rails. And you're like, all right, let's, uh, let's find the URL for. So um, you know, I just do a global search um, in, inside of Rails, right? And then I'm like, oh, it's only 13 matches across 12 files. <laughs> That's like super simple, right? <laughs> like, come on. <clears throat> Uh, so at, at this point in time, I was like, all right, well, I know Ruby knows w which uh, method is get, getting called. So like, why don't we just use that? In, you can just put a little tracer, put your uh, method source location, and then we, we had the exact, uh, exact line item. So following that, we find this, this guy, and we're kind of doing something, uh, and then we're calling super. Does anybody know what super does? I kind of maybe gave that away. Yeah, super? So okay, I, I kind of heard some mumbling. I, I think it was the gist of super will, will call um, the ancestors of your class until it finds somebody that responds to that same method, which maybe that's not what was said, but that's totally what it does. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, like first inclination, we're just like, all right, well, hey, Ruby knows all the ancestors, so let's just get all the ancestors. Boom, ancestors. Um, oh yeah, side note, you love tacos? <laughs> Uh, Torchy's Tacos or Taco Deli is kind of like a religious question around here. Um, so do not ask me which one I prefer. I, I, I think uh, we should be open and accepting and you should eat at both of them. Uh, Taco Deli, however, not open uh, for dinner. So you kind of have to get in there. All right. Uh, so, okay, module ancestors. Back to the Ruby. 
Oh, and they have vegetarian friendly options. So if you're not into like the meat fest with Franklin's or Rudy's, you can, you can grab some tacos, Tex-Mex. Okay, so uh, if, if you call a string of foo and grab the class, and from that you get the ancestors, you're gonna get a pretty simple list. You're gonna see, oh, it's a string, foo's a string. Um, it also happens to have comparable object, kernel, and basic object, which, which uh, it, you know, pretty reasonable. So again, we have this line of code, and, and we actually run it inside of our project, and we're like, oh, this is gonna be great. We're gonna see exactly like where this is coming from, and then you're just like, like, <clears throat> that's pretty much exactly what I did. And I'm like, all right, this makes, you know, how, like, I know Ruby knows what's going on, but, like, how do I know what's going on? Um, so, like, in this scenario, I'm like, all right, maybe I'm trying to get too fancy. I'm using too much Ruby. And it's like, no, the solution is to use more Ruby. <clears throat> So uh, to, before we can get into exactly how we can see what's being called here, you can take a look at um, module method defined. It will, it will tell you if a method is defined on a class. So here we've got, we're grabbing a string class. So a uh, string of uh, foo dot class is going to bring us back the string class. And we can ask and say like, hey, do you have the uh, method of upcase defined on it? In which in case it does. Or if we grab a fixnum, integer, whatever you want to call this, um, and ask if it has upcase defined on it, it does not, which totally makes sense. Um, another one we're going to be using is, uh, is method, I think that's supposed to be module, um, instance method. And so sometimes you're not always working with an instance of that class. For, for, so if we have call user.new, that gives us an instance of the user object. And we can just call method on it right away. But if you have the only the user class, uh, then you can call that instance method on it and, and find out if you were to create a, an instance of that user class, um, where that instance method would come from. So uh, we can kind of put all of that together and, uh, and come back to our original problem of like what exactly does super do how, and how do we, how do we find it. Um, so uh, we can actually just take all of our ancestors, we got that big list before, and loop through them. For each one of them, we can say like, hey, ancestor, do you respond to this method? Like, is this something that you know how to deal with? And if it does, then we're gonna just go ahead and output, uh, we're, we're, we're gonna grab the instance method of the URL for that, that we're dealing with, and grab the source location of it, and then just kinda like output all of that. <clears throat> So, uh, and, and this is kind of a way, uh, we don't necessarily know that we can, cr like normally whenever you call a class dot, something dot new, you have to put things into it. And this is a way to avoid that problem. So we can just get the instance method directly. Okay, so, so all of that combined, <clears throat> we're gonna get something kind of like this. This is, this is our output, this is our, our tracer. Um, and uh, does anybody a fan of Sesame Street? All right, I, I, this is like my favorite game in programming. It's like, which one of these things is not like the others? <clears throat> it's a very scientific method of uh, debugging. <clears throat> so, um, all right, it, you know, it wasn't that one, it wasn't that one, it wasn't that one, and it's like, oh, hey, this one's different than all of the other ones. Uh, let's, take a, let's take a look at that. So it, look, it looks like it's in action dispatch routing URL4, which makes sense for uh, if we're looking for where URL4 is defined, uh, that it would be in the file called URL4. <clears throat> okay, so at this point in time, we're kind of done, um, almost. Bear with me just for, for, for a second. Um, we do have a uh, food recommendation. Not really food, but this is more beer. If you go downtown, um, Easy Tiger is a phenomenal, phenomenal place. Um, they've got a whole bunch of artisanal uh, beers and um, good scotch selection, good whiskey selection. They also make their own sausage and their own, uh, own pretzels. I highly recommend them. Also, you might have, oh, I'll talk about 6th Street later, but it, this is like, this is kind of like cool 6th Street, not like dirty 6th Street, <laughs> <clears throat> which is actually a thing. That's, anyway. Okay, so, uh, all right, going back to it. So now we're in this file. We know, we, we want to make sure, like, okay, before we kind of did this kind of guess and check Sesame Street thing before, like, let's actually double check and make sure that we are, we, this is where we want to be. So we call caller.inspect and we run our program again. And that we can, so now we, we verify, okay, this, this is actually coming from the line that we thought it was coming from. We can kind of move forward. 
And, and, and from here, we can kind of just kind of just keep digging deeper and deeper and deeper. Um, and it's, you notice that like the URL4 is actually calling multiple other URL4s. Uh, so just like this, this, this uh, crazy Ruby chain. Uh, so we keep on doing method source location, method source location, until finally we end up at this uh, location of action dispatch routing route set, which again, another amazing name for a file. <clears throat> There's like a thousand of these named files in Rails if you've ever actually checked. It's kind of like impossible to comprehend. Um, so at this, at this point in time, we, this is like our, our final location and we, we've, we see exactly uh, the code. It's like, it's almost kind of like we came to a dead end, but that's a good thing because this is where the codes, this is like, you know, where the magic happens, I guess, in terms of the code. Um, so at, at this point in time, we can take a look at exactly why is this problem happening. Um, we can, uh, ideally, like we've already reproduced the problem, otherwise we wouldn't have even been able to get to this point. But we can kind of attempt to fix at, of, of the problem. Um, I will actually just go in and, and attempt to fix like live on my local machine um, in that bundle open copy, which is maybe not the safest thing to do in the world uh, if, if you are doing that. You can always um, do like gem uninstall action pack and then gem install action pack to fix any mistakes you've been you've made or remove the like thousand puts that are in your file. <clears throat> uh, you can also rate uh, like open up an issue uh, with the with a maintainer. If somebody comes to me and they're like, "Hey, I have this bug and I tracked it all the way down to this file, but I don't know exactly how to fix it." Like, if you can give me a line number, that that saves me like so much time um, that could be spent fixing the issue instead of just trying to hunt down and find out where it actually is. So it's, it's hugely valuable. And now you know so much more about the library in terms of how it's structured, um, where all of the pieces fit in, and, and kind of how things are interacting with it. Um, or you could actually open up a pull request and, and just fix it. So this is, a, this is the pull request that was generated from this, uh, this problem, 97, 94. Um, and um, basically, we are just kind of pulling out uh, the um, that protocol, that HTTP, and then just letting our, our host uh, exist. So at, like, to me, the hard part of this problem wasn't necessarily fixing the problem. It was finding out where is the problem. Um, and, and chances are, or, or most of the time that I'm dealing with these issues, if you can say the problem comes from these five line numbers or this file or this class, then that's it. it that's most of the uh, of the battle. <clears throat> so uh, just some some other things that I've used really frequently that you probably all know about. But um, object.methods, you can always just call dot methods, and it just like spits out everything that that object knows about, unless somebody's doing some like funky fancy uh, like method missing stuff. Um, or instance methods, you can you can call this directly on a class and pass in false, and it'll tell you only the methods that that instance responds to as opposed to all objects. Uh, so uh, also, some people, they'll kind of be like, all right, that was like my brain is melted. I kind of, he's like doing, calling methods on the method class, like I, what? Uh, and say like, this is really complicated. I don't want to deal with this. Um, but this is the most complicated example that I could find, nine times out of 10. Uh, I'll just go in there and it'll be like one or two hops away. And, and, and one thing you notice is I, I really have no idea how Rails is organized or how it's even working. Um, like, it's a series of tubes for all I know. Um, but we, we used Ruby to kind of guide us and, and show, us, uh, show us the way. And I've done this for uh, half a dozen or so um, just issues that I, I've run into. And now, sometimes, I'll be like, oh, here's a bug in Rails. I actually kind of know where, where to look at that, um, as opposed to uh, just opening up an issue and hoping that one of the like seven core members <laughs> will like, wake up and be like, man, this is the issue I'm going to fix today. <clears throat> because, uh, and this, is, this comes up on, on the Rails mailing list a lot. They're, they're, they're like, just recently, somebody was like, hey, there's like 300 open pull requests and like 500 100 open issues, and like, you know, like, why don't we do something about this? And it's like, yeah, why don't you do something about this? Um, it's, it, it, it is a community, uh, you know, open source, it is community run project. Um, 
and it needs it needs community involvement. Um, has anybody submitted a pull request to an open source project? Yeah. Um, has anybody submitted to Rails? Yeah? Okay. We got we got some we got some hands. Like I would love to come back and next year, like you double that number. Be like, hey, you know what? I use method source location, track down a bug, and like, and now thousands of Rails developers everywhere can use HTTP something something in their action mailer configuration something. It's like yes. <clears throat> okay. Um, so I guess I kind of covered that. Uh, ideally, we want you to to go away from j being just a bug reporter to being a bug fixer, um, to be able to better troubleshoot your code. It's not always even just, like Rails is an example. It can be in your own client code. It can be in code that you've written. It can be, it can be in other libraries. Um, and it also helps you maybe write more readable code. If you're using super everywhere and you don't necessarily need to be, you're like, oh, okay, well, I guess if I have a hard time figuring out where this is getting called from and going, like maybe other people will too. Um, so at the end of the day, source location is going to show you where you're going. Uh, caller is going to be, be showing you where you've been. Um, and you can, you can kind of let Ruby show you the way. Uh, pro tip, if you're here long enough, go to Alamo Draft House. It, like, you, can, you can watch movies, drink a beer, like, and eat nachos at the same time. It's pretty epic. Um, also, I mentioned uh, Sixth Street. This is like Austin is kind of famous for, uh, or one of the things. Like you can kind of walk around on Friday, Saturday nights, uh, and watch like really drunk people get even more drunk. Or you can be one of those really drunk people. <clears throat> so those are all some things that maybe you might want to check out. Uh, so finally, if there's one thing that you take away from this, it's that. I have to sign up for code triage absolutely right now and subscribe to Rails issues. Uh, so thank you very much for bearing with me through my technical difficulties. Uh, does anyone have any questions? Cool. Well, uh, thank you all very much for coming by. Um,